six weeks, you will see a difference. And in 12 weeks, you know, things are beginning to stay there. Really? Yes. And so really, over the months, you, you gradually and gradually see this difference. It's all in Eva's book called The Facial Workout. Thank you so much Thank for joining you. us today. I can't wait to Thank see you again. Last week, you'll remember, we went to the supermarket to do the shopping for the Hammersley family who are all following my low-fat diet. But just buying low-fat food isn't really quite enough. We actually need to prepare it properly. And today I've come along to the house of Elaine and John where we're going to be looking at different techniques of low-fat cooking. Now, John, first of all, you're the curry king, aren't you? Yes, I make uh, curries at home and I'm poor and spices, but you always seem to use excessive amounts of fat. Right, well, we'll have a look at how to make one without additional fat today. Mm. But first of all, how are you getting on? Oh, I've lost another two inches off the rice line and uh, got the pounding right. Terrific. Well yeah. done. Right, well, let's get on straight away and fry some onions. Now, this is a non-stick frying pan, and if we put the onion straight into it, and of course, in a non-stick frying pan, you do need to have a spatula and not a metal implement. So we just move this around, and amazingly, they will go brown, they will cook, and they will taste delicious without any fat at all. Now, I'll carry on doing this, John, if you'd like to come in and start making the, the sauce. Yes, I'll just get the sauce and I'll get everything in. Now, of course, all these are vegetables, and so there's no need to worry about any fat content in those. And so we can put as many of those in as we yeah. like. Not ready for the onions? Yep, let's pop these in. Oh, you see how brown they've gone? Yeah, lovely. It's surprising, isn't it? Mm. Not a drop of fat, no fat in at there. All. Now, of course, this is a basic curry sauce recipe, and we could add anything to it at this point, but I see that you've got some mince, and yes. of course we can dry fry that and get rid of some more fat. Oh, nice. Preheat the pan first and gently cook it. Now, the mince is cooked now, but you can see instantly how much fat has come out of it. But if we put it through a sieve, then we can make absolutely certain that we drain away as much as we possibly can. Let's put that back. Now, just leave that for a, a minute or two so that all the fat really does drain through. And if I just hold it here, just look at how much fat has come out of it. Right, now all we have to do is to put the mince actually into the sauce, John. Now, how long would you actually normally cook it for once the mince is in there? Uh, about two hours altogether. And how would you normally serve it? Serve it on a bit of board rice. Oh, would you? Now, yeah. I've brought here some brown rice, mm. and that's really better for you. Mm. And it's really delicious. Now, Tracy, that looks though like you've got a turkey for your Sunday lunch. That's a, an ideal food to have, you know, it's really low in fat. Now, how would you normally cook? your Sunday joint? I'd lay the silver foil in the roasting tin, put the turkey inside, right. put the oil over the turkey, wrap it up and then put it in the oven. Right, now you wouldn't use oil now, obviously. Not now, no. No, quite. But we can even help it a bit more. So uh, instead of using the normal conventional baking tin, let's use this, which in this case is actually the grill pan, because it's got a rack. And if we can place the turkey, any joint, on top of the rack, the fat will drain away. To make it nice and moist, we can put in some lemon. And also, to make it nice and flavorful, we can add some onion. So let's pop that in there. And if you wanted to actually use any stuffing, you could stuff in the, the uh, neck end, but ideally sort of cook the stuffing separately. So would you like to pop that onto the rack? And then, instead of putting the foil underneath, put the foil over the top. Now we do this not so much to help in the cooking, but to keep the oven clean, but we should remove it about 30 minutes before we're going to serve it. Now, Elaine, you're cooking my favourite dry roast potatoes. Yes. I was talking to my neighbour and I was telling her about them. Now, she's been a cook for years and years and years, and she's tried them and she says they're absolutely delicious, she says, and she would never go back to them <laughs> with the oil. Now, all we need to do when we've got all of those out is to just sprinkle them with a little bit of salt. And also we can do parsnips this way. But with parsnips, we only put them in for an hour, whereas for potatoes, we need to put them in for an hour and a half. Now, how do you make your gravy now, Tracy? I used to make it from 
the juices from the meat. Yes. And now we use powder and vegetable water. Excellent. And of course, as you know, Tracy, instead of putting butter into the mashed or creamed potatoes, we're going to put natural yogurt. This looks like a rice pudding, yeah? It is, but we've tried it your way with the skim milk. Good. And the um, slimmer sugar. Right. Instead of the normal way, and it's really nice. It looks delicious. Well, to add an extra treat, um, have you ever tried from our spray before? Never. Right, well, we've got our meringues here, and of course meringues are fine because they're fat-free, because they, the fat in, in an egg is in the yolk and not the white. Now, let's just put some of this in here. You just have a taste of it, and you tell me what you think. It's really nice. It is. It's really nice and creamy. And in one of these pots, there's only 50 calories and virtually no fat. So then all we need to do is, on the top, pop these lovely low-fat strawberries. And who would guess that that was a low-fat dessert? That turkey really looks beautifully done now, and you'd never know that it hadn't been cooked with fat. Now, all you have to do is to make sure that the skin is removed before you serve it. Well, who would ever guess that this was a diet meal? Now, Paul, I really am looking forward to you tasting one of my dry roast well, potatoes. I should, so, I should do it then, shall You're I? looking a lot slimmer. Yes, I've lost a little bit again. Not bad, are they? They're lovely. If you want to join my diet and fitness club, you can do so by buying the action pack many Hollywood critics said would never be made, also picked up five other Oscars. The next news is the one o'clock news. Now the regional news. Good afternoon. 120 jobs are to go at a maintenance firm based at Stansted Airport in Essex. FFV Aerotech refurbish and service aircraft. The firm, which employs 900 staff at Stansted, blames the job losses on the recent fall in international air traffic. The inquest into the deaths of the three young Cambridgeshire men who were killed when their car crashed as it was being followed by police will open today. The three, who all came from Fullbourne, died instantly when their Ford Escort left the road and crashed into iron railings on a bridge on the A1303 at Quai. A 28-year-old man has died in a road accident in Wellingborough. Wayne Emerton from Poplar Road in Findon was driving a Ford Sierra on the A510 when the accident happened last night. West Suffolk Health Authority has voted to downgrade Newmarket Hospital despite fierce opposition from local people. Members of the authority agreed to turn the building from a general hospital into a geriatric unit with an outpatients department. And the weather. The rest of the day will be generally dry but cloudy in most places with just a few brighter intervals developing. It will feel colder in the fresh to strong easterly winds which will hold temperatures down to about 8 degrees Celsius. Now the national weather with John Ketley. Hello, good afternoon to you. Well, yesterday the highest temperatures were to be found in the north of Scotland, 16 to 18 degrees in one or two spots there. It's not quite so good today, but that's where the best of the sunshine still is. And up in the northwest highlands, I think we're going to find temperatures around about 14 degrees, but most of us, once again, having rather a chilly easterly wind coming in off the North Sea. Really quite a strong and blustery wind it is too. That's keeping temperatures around about 6 to 9 degrees countrywide. Anyway, you've got shelter from that northeasterly wind, you're going to see a rather higher temperature. Now, most places are dry, but the radar picture some little while ago did pick out some rain across the Irish Sea through southwest Midlands and central southern England. It really isn't amounting to very much, but it will make further progress westwards into parts of Northern Ireland during the course of the afternoon. At the same time, there will be one or two brighter spells developing over East Anglia, the southeast, probably northwest England as well, some sunshine there. But the likely place for the best of the sunshine will remain up in the northwest of Scotland for the rest of today. Those winds staying rather stiff for the rest of the afternoon and evening, but then beginning to moderate as we run through tonight, and much lighter winds and more brightness to come during Wednesday. Tonight then, more thick cloud around, still the odd patch of rain and drizzle in the south, and maybe across into Northern Ireland as well. And later on tonight, some thicker cloud approaching northwestern Scotland, though it should remain dry, but patchy rain turning up there during tomorrow. That's it from me.